Hello, and welcome to the Coherence screencast series. My name is Rob Mysick. I'm a product manager on the Oracle Coherence product. And today I'm going to give an overview of the Coherence Extend client connectivity improvements and Coherence 3 set. Today we're going to discuss three main topics. Uh, proxy discovery, client connection load balancing, and defining client identities. First up is proxy discovery, or what you could call WKA for Coherence Extend clients. With proxy discovery, Coherence Extend clients now only need to be configured with a small list of proxy node addresses. Those connections, uh, once the client connects to a proxy, it's then redirected to the least utilized proxy server. This greatly reduces client configuration overhead and allows for proxy servers to be added to the environment without changing client configuration. Just to give you an example of what uh, the TCP initiator element could look like before and after the 3.7 improvements. Before, you see you'd have a list of, let's see, here is four different proxy addresses that you would, uh, that client would be able to connect to. Basically, the, that list of four IP and port combinations are the only addresses that this client, configured in this manner, would be able to connect to. After the 3.7 improvements, you could drop this list down to just one proxy node address, and the client would connect to this proxy node and then be redirected to any number of proxy servers that are currently running in the coherence data grid tier. Keep in mind, this is just an example. We would always recommend configuring multiple proxy nodes within your TCP initiator for fault tolerance reasons. The next new feature in Coherence 3.7 is the dynamic load balancing for Coherence Extend. We've improved the proxy server, the proxy service, to support pluggable load balancing strategies. With that, we added our own default policy that distributes client connections based on a variety of metrics. First up is connection count. That utilization is calculated by adding the current connection count and the pending connection count. If a proxy is, has a configured connection limit, and the current connection count plus pending count equals the connection limit, the utilization is considered infinite. Next, we would use the daemon pool utilization. This utilization equals the current number of active daemon threads. If all daemon threads are currently active, the utilization is also considered to be infinite. Next up, beyond daemon pool utilization, is message backlog utilization. This utilization is calculated by adding the current incoming message backlog and the current outgoing message backlog. Each proxy service maintains a list of proxy services ordered by their utilization. The ordering is weighted first by connection utilization, then by daemon pool utilization, and then by message backlog. The list is resorted whenever a proxy service utilization changes. The proxy services send each other current utilization whenever their connection count changes or every 10 seconds, or every 10 seconds, whichever comes first. As I mentioned previously, you can actually plug in your own custom strategies. The APIs can be found in the, to the COM Tangasol Coherence Net Proxy Package. Custom strategies must implement the proxy service load balancer interface. You can extend the default proxy load balancer if you do, if you so choose. Uh, a member object which you uniquely identifies each client is passed to the strategy, allowing for the implementation of client-specific or client-weighted strategies. And then you simply plug in, plug in your implementation, passing the fully qualified class name to the load balancer instance element. Next up, just wanted to give you a quick demo of the load balancing and proxy discovery. So in this example, what I want to show is how to start a couple proxy servers and then start a couple clients and show the proxy discovery as well as the load balancing. So you'll actually see uh, multiple clients connecting to multiple proxy servers when only one uh, remote address is actually configured within the client. So first let's start with the proxy server config. So we've just set up a distributed scheme and we've set up the proxy scheme. You can see here that I've set system properties for uh, overriding the address and the port from the command line. Right? And of course, auto start is set to true. 
So we can go ahead and we can just start uh, one of these proxy servers. Let's start it on port 9099, the default. And while that's starting up, I'm actually just going to uh, duplicate this proxy server configuration and set one up to run on port 9100. And while I'm doing that, we can just take a look at the overrides that we're using here from the command line. Uh, we're using the extend port that I previously set up within the proxy server config XML. And we're telling it to use the proxy server config XML. Now also, I am setting this up to be monitorable via JMX. So let's run this one as well. You can see here I had already started uh, the one on 9099 already started up. That's good. And those were some log messages showing partitions being moved around to the new cache server that just started. All right, so we now have uh, two nodes within this cluster, both being proxy servers and both being storage-enabled cache servers. So next up, let's take a look at the client config. Again, very straightforward. We have a cache mapping for the same uh, cache that's being run on the, uh, the cache servers. And we set up a remote cache. And tell it just one socket address, again, localhost 9099, which is the original proxy server that I started up. Right. So let's start up one of the clients. Oh, and just to show you what the client's actually doing, it's literally just starting up the uh, communication, which is initiated by uh, gaining a reference to the, or creating the uh, cache dist extend, which is referenced in both the client config XML and the proxy server config XML. And then it waits. So let's set up or start up one of these clients. Actually, let's take a look at one, the configuration of the client first. So what makes this an actual client? Uh, first, the fact uh, that I'm using a client-style config that only has the remote caches uh, specified means that it'll be a, a client only. Also, I'm going to disable the TCMP, which is a messaging protocol, which is our clustered messaging protocol. So that's explicitly disabled, and just for safety's sakes, I've also disabled local storage for this node. And we'll get into the other uh, VM parameters later on in this screencast. So let's go ahead and start that up. So you'll see one client connecting. And you'll see it's connecting to localhost, which is uh, 10.152.11.57, and to port 90.99. Now keep in mind, it's using this client config, which only has one uh, remote address specified uh, for localhost port 9099. Now let's duplicate, uh, actually, let's just start up the same client again, another instance of that client. And you'll see that we're actually showing uh, it initially connected to 9099, same as before, but then since there is an underutilized proxy server on 9100, we're actually redirecting this client to 9100, and then now it's confirming that connection to 9100. Now if you spin up jconsole, and we will connect to one of those cache servers, take a look at the mbeans. Let's see, we need to look at the connection manager and the TCP proxy service. You'll see we have two nodes. Those are the two proxy services that we start up. We'll look at the attribute count. There's one uh, connection count on the first proxy node, and there's one connection count on the second proxy node. Now, the last piece of functionality I wanted to talk about in terms of client connectivity improvements is the ability to define client identities. So it's easiest to show by example, here we have the same extend client app one configuration that we ran before and actually is currently still running. Just like previous versions of Coherence, you can define a role, the cluster name, the site name, the rack name, machine name, and so on. Now that information is actually exposed via JMX. So you can see here's the one proxy server running and 
here is the member information that's now displayed via JMX and was defined by those overrides in the extend client run configuration. For, for readability I actually uh, copied that text into a text editor. So you can see here role one, member, process, machine, site, rack. So let's say you want to change those. So let's duplicate this run profile. We'll call it app2. And let's change some of the VM parameters. Let's change it to role2, plus site2, rack2, and machine2. And we'll run this one. Bring up J console. We now have a connection to the second proxy service. And I will copy these into the text editor. You can see here, complete with typo, we have run role 2, machine 2, rack 2, and site 2. That wraps up the client connectivity improvements in Coherence 3.7. Thank you for watching the Coherence Screencast series. And here are a couple links for more information on Coherence, Coherence 3.7, and the Coherence Incubator.